Yo, what is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a shorter episode here today in the mid-Tennessee State Blue Raiders Dynasty. We're here today doing a little mid-season recruiting video um, after the last episode against UTSA, after we got dominated against UTSA. If you missed the series so far, have a playlist of the whole series. And if you missed the last episode, make sure you go and check it out. But today... A little mid-season recruiting video. Right now we are three and four, um, just in the middle of the Conference USA play. And I thought this was a good time to show recruiting as I go through the top 25 and the Heisman watch here so far. As you see, FAU in our conference ranked 25th and Devin Singletary, the last player on the Heisman watch there at 5th. But I want to go through recruiting very just kind of explain where I'm going recruiting wise. We have our top player right here in absolute need, Frank Flowers. Plus six, 77 overall gem, but you see USF has a lead on us. We're down 960, but we have a big time visit. This is why next episode, I already explained this in the UTSA uh, video. Next episode, when we play home against Marshall, this is the biggest game of the year because we we definitely um, put a lot of players into this one week, week nine. There's a lot of these top players like Frank Flowers up to a 77. It is hard to recruit as mid-Tennessee State, especially when I have no reputation built up. Nothing on my coaching tree whatsoever, really. But you see, there's some good players that I found out there. Frank Flowers, a just absolutely athletic freak, really good cover skills. And you have Dan Bonner here, an athlete, can play multiple positions as well. Um, here we see we're in the lead here on him. So if we can get something going with Don, Dan Bonner there, that would be nice to get him. Now, strong safety. We have two guys graduating. So Freddie Bell is a big time target here at the strong safety position. You see he can zone cover a little bit as well as tackle very well from the strong safety position. Got to be able to do that. And we're losing to Georgia State down 405. But like I said, we have this week nine chance to do just that and take the lead against Georgia State. Although they do have a visit in week 14. It's going to have to make a very good impression on Freddie Bell. We already got Travis Seward here. He committed a couple of weeks ago. Is my only commit so far this year. Um, looks like he could play quarterback. Looks like he could play a variety of positions. Um, he could probably cover. He, he, can, he can definitely play all over the field. So I have to see where we use him. He's an athlete. Um, probably live stream in the offseason if I get the opportunity. If my internet is good enough to live stream, I guess. If not, I guess where do you think he fits on this roster? Um, I'll talk a little bit on the roster as we keep going down this list about what we need and where we're going. But as you see right now, a lot of secondary players and a lot of athletes that can move just about anywhere in the field. We have Brian Mason here. He's a guy that really could go in a bunch of different directions. I haven't really figured out where his best position is. Um, he's got the good jumping, good agility, and okay speed, okay acceleration. Uh, we're in the lead on him, though, by quite a bit. Uh, he just had a UConn visit who got him a lot of points, but they still are not going to make the projected cutoff, though, apparently. And this right here has him as a tight end, which might just be where he is because he has okay speed. Uh, looks like he could catch a little. Uh, have to see where he is and what his ratings end up being. But Brian Mason's an interesting prospect. 70 overall. We'll have to see where he goes. Uh, Ross Reed, we're in third here behind UAB and South Alabama. We actually get UAB in week 10, so maybe we can make an impression there. But he's a hard hitter. Can't really cover very well from the free safety position. Uh, we have one more year of Reed Blankenship, so this guy could be a freshman. We can either redshirt him or he can just learn a year under Blankenship. So we'll have to see what we do there. Like I said, a lot of visits week nine. He's going to do just that. Um, we have Drew Ostrander. He's a Juke O two star. Uh, he has really good speed at 92 speed, but he doesn't do a whole lot else well. He has a good Juke move. Can't catch the ball very well. Uh, really was just going to be depth as a Juco player. Uh, got him visiting. We're pretty high in the lead, so I think we should get him. Uh, but we're going to have to see what kind of role he can play on this offense. Obviously, we're going to be losing Chat and Mobley. At least I do believe we are. I'll have to check that out as the year goes along. Um, Lawrence Hickman, though, probably not going to get him, but he's another Juco halfback. Maybe we'd put more into him if he wasn't a Juco, but he's one overall down, and obviously Ostrander is one overall higher, and they're both Juco's. Here's a couple of guys you'll see here and probably not going to make the board eventually. We have Bobby Huggins, though, here as Jeremy Tuttons. Probably is not going to make the board eventually. Probably going to just remove him. Some of these guys I scout halfway through. Don't put a ton of points in them. Just keep them on the board just in case we get some commits and I can throw some more points that way. But if you saw the top guys like Frank Flowers and a bunch of the other guys, you would see that I don't exactly have the points to be throwing at some of these guys. Uh, Bobby Huggins, another athlete there. Have to see what position he ends up being. Bobby Grigsby. 
he would be nice to have. We need some depth on the defensive line, losing two DNs. So obviously any kind of depth, if we're going to have to really rely on the defensive tackles this next year, you're going to need some depth there. But either way, it's nice to have some guys on the team that I think I could develop. And I really like Bobby, Bobby Grigsby's stats as well as Nick Walker. We are losing two tight ends. I think this is a guy that can catch. And I think that he's also a guy that has enough speed to make some big plays. And we're going to schedule a visit right here. We're going to go week 11 FIU. Um, just I just felt like it, I guess. Um, there's some more guys, as I said. I'm saying um a lot, I can tell. <laughs> but defensive ends, you see we have a ton out here. I think there's about five right there in that little stretch. Trying to get at least one, maybe two. Can always move some guys around. Maybe athletes end up being at defensive end. Not exactly sure, but what route, what guys do you think we need to focus on? I can only put 500 points on the people right now, and obviously visits are huge, but I think really the make or break for this whole entire recruiting season is probably week nine. If we can play like we get, did against North Texas and not like we did against UTSA, you see we're graduating 19 people, so usually my rule of thumb is you replace what you're losing. We're losing 19 guys. We'd love to get 19 scholarships. Obviously, if we end up only getting 15 guys, but they're the right set of guys, that's not a big deal. I'm not going to bring in a ton of one stars unless I absolutely have to just to fill position needs. You see, we're second to last in recruiting total around the nation. Got to improve on that, and that's exactly what I plan to do after hopefully getting a win against Marshall, but it's definitely not going to be easy, but we have some big-time guys visiting. Hope you guys enjoyed this recruiting update. Make sure you comment and let me know the guys that I should be targeting. Catch you guys next time. Peace.